Holy Father God, thank you for the privilege to praise you this morning and to give you the glory and the honor for all of us through your name. And Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts by your grace forgive others. Let your will be done in our lives. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit to read your Holy Word, to hide it in our hearts, and to share it with others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. We are still reading verses dealing with <coughs> the family. Uh, for 30 years, my family and I read Ephesians chapter 5 and chapter 6 every day because it deals with the family. And uh, we're not talking about browbeating people or with the Bible. It just so happens that our family really needed that. And I suspect uh, that many other families need it as well. Families that have deep Christian roots going back hundreds of years uh, may not need to do that. But families that uh, is really the first generation of being born again and understanding what salvation is really about and not just going on traditions and false doctrine uh, and is really the first generation of, of people being saved for real from the Word of God by the power of God uh, you might need to do that because your foundations are shoddy at best and just uh, filled with traditions and religion and not true faith in what the Word of God says. I never heard of these verses growing up. I never heard them read anywhere. <clears throat> going up at the house or at the church and these verses need to be read in uh, most families so we're just we're dealing with one verse today as you might recall this is supposed to be a short version of uh, devotions for those who do not have the time to spend a whole hour in family devotions do something we're showing you that you can do something verse 12 says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places uh, let me say quickly however even though we don't wrestle against flesh and blood in our family in the ministry in the church the devil is behind it but you have to deal with that human being who is allowing the devil to come into the door of the family they have to uh, suffer the consequences chastisement, rebuke, whatever, uh, so that they will know that they are not going to be allowed to open that door for that devil to get into the family. You just can't go around saying, well, it's not, we're wrestling not against flesh and blood. And that's true, we don't. The devil is behind it, but you got to stop that person opening that door for the devil. And uh, so uh, you got to deal with that. It's called chastisement. It is called rebuke. Uh, you have to confront that person. Uh, Dr. Dobson called it tough love. We need more of that in our families. Not this uh, candy love, this little sweet little love and all of that. If you got a family like that, more power to you. 
but we have some Negroes in our family, and I don't care if it's white or black, I call all people Negroes, white, black, red, or yellow, we got some Negroes in our family who need tough love, and they need it for a while until they understand that they cannot continue to open that door for that devil. Can somebody in internet world and somebody here say amen? You got to stop that person from letting the devil use them. And you got to help them to understand uh, that he must or she must tell the devil, listen, you're not being punished right now. I am. So don't use, you can't use me anymore. So allow me to read that in your hearing again. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood. You don't need to hate your family members. You don't need to hate your church members. You don't need to be mean to them. You may have to rebuke them. If it's a child, you may have to chastise them. If it's a wife, you may have to rebuke her. Yes, that's right. I said you may have to rebuke her. Don't let her open the door for the devil every day, keeping some mess up and confusion up in the house, man. The children need a place to study. The children need peace. They need order. They need uh, protection from the devil and anybody, particularly an adult, letting the devil into the house. And so you might have to rebuke them and let them know you can't do that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Do not be shocked. Do not be surprised. Do not be taken aback when the devil attacks your family through an individual, through a Negro. Don't be shocked. Because it will happen, my beloved. If, you, if you're going to pray, you're going to have, your family's going to have a personal uh, ministry through the church and otherwise to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil is going to be on you like white on rice and black on me. You can, you can rest assured of that. He is, he's not going to sit by and let you do that. He is not going to sit by and let you take people to church and uh, pray for people and pray for yourself and pray for your family to survive when he's trying to destroy your family and seeking to destroy your church. No, no, no. He's not going to let you do that without a fight. Let's pray for the family. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, this morning, that you would heal every Christian family, every Christian family that has stepped out by faith, trusting in you, believing in you, going to the house of God, praying together in family devotions, texting one another, uh, Verses on prayer, motivating each other to pray, reminding each other to pray, always closing conversations in prayer. Lord, we pray, help them to understand that a withering attack will come against them, and it won't be anybody, any human being, any flesh and blood. The devil will be behind it and help them to remember that, to love their family member. To love them enough to rebuke them if they're letting the devil inside the door, opening the door for the devil, uh, so that that door can be shut. Uh, and to practice tough love, if necessary, uh, to slam that door shut and to keep it shut. So everybody can be whole, everybody can be at peace, everybody can be at rest and safe and victorious. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, our devotional passage from the Word of God is Psalm 
99 verses 5 through 9. The Bible reads, Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name, they called upon the Lord, and he answered them. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. So when you pray, my beloved, expect God to answer your prayers when you pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are faithful and obedient to him and you're praying according to his will and not yours. Verse 7, he spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. Is God speaking to your heart throughout the day? Is God leading you and guiding you throughout the day? They kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord, our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their inventions. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Can somebody say amen to the word of God? Amen. Holy Father God, we thank you for your holy word. Hide it in our hearts. And the Lord have it to find a lodging place in our hearts that we can remember it. And we can uh, meditate on it. And we can live by it and apply it to our lives. We thank you for how your Holy Word weighs us down uh, and keeps us, keeps our feet on the ground and, uh, and we're not blown about with every wind of doctrine or every wind of the devil. Uh, we are satisfied and we're solid uh, throughout the day because we have your Holy Word inside of us. And I thank you for that, that feeling and that joy and that peace and that solidness in my life. And I pray that you would <coughs> impart it to other people and other Christians in their lives. And so much so that, Lord, we will get the salt out of the salt shaker and that we will share your holy word with other people, people on the job people in the community, uh, people uh, in the marketplace as we travel. The Lord, help us to carry your holy word with us in a gospel pamphlet that we can leave on the airplane seat, that we can leave in a restroom, that we can leave at a restaurant with a tip. Holy Father God, help us to be soul conscious, as we used to call it. Help us to be uh, mindful of lost souls all around us. Not only that, but troubled souls all around us. Uh, because your Holy Word has a way of untroubling people and setting them free. Uh, especially through the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, help us to be evangelistically minded. Help us to be on the lookout for other people who are hurting in this world and who need you. How selfish we are uh, to not pray for others and not witness to others and not share your holy word with others. For, Lord, this was the last thing you told us to do. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You didn't just put us here to go to Starbucks and sit down on our behinds and get all lost into our little world and think we're important without being a witness for you. Help us to do that. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and for sake. Amen. <clears throat> now my beloved, uh, let's pray for the estates uh, that is preachers evangelists, 
pastors, missionaries, the church itself, number two, the government, the president, and all governmental leaders, and uh, number three, the people, the citizens of this great country, and the, the traditional press, as well as the new press. Holy Father God, we pray for all uh, church servants, servants, servant leaders. We pray for all evangelists, all pastors, all church servant leaders, denominational servant leaders, Bible teachers, missionaries, and general workers in the church. Uh, we pray that you, you would help us to pray to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves. We pray that you would heal us and heal our land, revive us again, and help us to get back to you, our first love. For so many have fallen away. For so many, quite honestly, Lord, are falling away right now as we speak. And Lord, we pray that you would revive us again, bring back the backslidden, reclaim those who have gotten away from you. And then Lord, we pray for the president and all governmental leaders based upon the word, your word, that says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty holy father god we pray for president donald trump and his administration uh, his family each member of the White House staff, leaders of federal agencies, all members of Congress, all governors, mayors, police chiefs, and sheriffs, all military leaders, the leaders of all nations around the world. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that you give these people wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight, in some cases, to keep their mouths shut and uh, to control themselves and to not say stupid things and uh, to not keep putting themselves and getting themselves into trouble. And also we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would lead, guide and direct them to help the people, to help the citizenry. And Lord, we pray also that you would uh, bless them with salvation spiritual family financial material physical life protection and provision blessings and we pray in the name of the lord jesus christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil his demons and his hosts and the satanic spirit of uh, betrayal and judas spirit from the church and from the government for we're seeing a display of the Judas spirit like never before in government today. Grown rich men fighting each other in front of the world. What a crying shame. <clears throat> and Holy Father God, we pray for all of the people who are being hurt and being left uh, <clears throat> behind because of such foolishness. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that uh, you would protect the people from the egos and the evil and the wickedness of men acting like children. And we pray, Lord, for all of the traditional uh, media who are acting like children in talking about these events as well as the new media. Uh, it is so sad, Lord, that grown people get caught up 
and such a trivial foolishness when uh, the world is burning down and crumbling down around them and uh, people are dying and going to hell and people are living through hell all around this world we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that you will save those who are lost in the old media and the new media, revive those who are saved, and uh, help those Christians to stand up, uh, stand up for you in a corrupt uh, media environment. And Holy Father God, we pray for uh, all current events that are happening right now. We pray for the people impacted by the earthquake in California and the threats of a major earthquake um, destroying the whole western coast of this uh, great country called America. And we pray for the comfort of the families of uh, nearly 50 people killed in a tragic bus crash in on a beach in Argentina. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for family in Plano that are still going through uh, a very terrible time regarding their son being shot and killed. Comfort them as only you can. And then Holy Father God, we pray for uh, just a few of the hundreds of prayer requests that we have and we thank you for the privilege to pray for these people. What a joy and what a blessing and we thank you for the answers to prayer for these people. And we pray for Patricia, please have Jarrell and Gabriel and Joy to come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Fill them with your Holy Ghost power. We pray for Marie, please help her to continue to trust in you and lean on you and lean on the everlasting arms. We pray for you, Ush. Please bless the Arissa Missionary Movement and Independent and Indigenous Ministries there in India and the Lord bless us to be a blessing to them and the Lord we pray that all of these ministries would have good buildings and good vehicles to bring people back and forth to church and all of the Bibles in their native language to read and we know that you're going to do it we have no doubt and we pray whether you use us or somebody else the Lord we pray that it would come to pass and we know that you're hearing and answering our prayers. We're 100% confident that it's going to work out. And uh, we pray for those who have trusted you as Savior uh, through this ministry. We pray for Borquette. We pray for Kobe. And we pray for Jeanette. Help these to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be. And we pray for those who have recommitted their lives to you through this ministry. Something, an invitation we don't really give, have never given, but people have heard the gospel and they respond knowing that they're already saved. They just need to get back with the Lord and you draw them by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the power of your Holy Word. And uh, we find this uh, a wonderful uh, blessing to see people come back to you. And we pray for these three, Anika, Pascal, and Lineo, help them to stand strong in the faith. Uh, and to not backslide again. Uh, and Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for these people. We uh, commit these souls into your hands and we commit our souls into your hands. Let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Now, beloved, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you happened upon us uh, from the WWW, we're glad to have you. And uh, maybe you didn't understand everything, but you appreciate everything, and that's good. Come back any time. But if you're not born again, if you have never trusted Christ as Savior, if you were to die today, uh, and you're not sure that you would go to heaven to be with God where he wants you to be. Jesus Christ has a word for you found in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish but have everlasting life. Just understand that you are a sinner. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Just understand that the wages of sin is death. We all die physically because of sin. We die spiritually because of sin. And our soul goes to hell if we never trust Christ as our Savior in this life. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou or you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou or you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A dear friend, it is as simple as that. You don't have to join a church to be saved. Going to church is good, but it does not save you. You don't have to get baptized to be saved. Getting baptized is important and good, but it does not save you. Uh, you don't have to do a set of good works to be saved. Though Doing good works uh, is fine, but get, doing good works will not save you. Uh, you don't have to give any money to the church. Uh, giving money to the Lord through the church is good, uh, but it does not save you. Uh, all you have to do to be saved from hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins on the cross, was buried, and rose again. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, including your sins. You might as well get in on it. You might as well trust Christ as Savior because your sins are paid for by Him. I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge and I admit that I am a sinner. I have sinned by choice and I have sinned by nature against you. I have broken some of your Ten Commandments, if not all of them. I have lied before. I've stolen before, I've lusted before, I've dishonored my parents before, and other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon me and forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins, as the Lamb of God who took away my sins. I believe that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and turn from my old evil ways and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray and for his sake, amen. Now dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the word of God, you are now uh, saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven. So welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, 
please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer.